Hi folks, Mr. Teslonian back here again. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the gasifying wood stove for you. First thing we're going to do here is load it with some fine uh, materials that I picked up, some small sticks. You can use this with big wood or small wood. It's just easy for me to pick this up underneath the trees here. So I'm going to show you what I got. This is basically the firewood we're going to use. We're going to just feed that in the hole here. Make sure you don't have any long sticks sticking in there, kind of jamming it all up in a weird angle. Okay, so we got a little bit of firewood put in there. Next thing we're going to do is take some of this cedar bark, just because I want a quick light up here. Just kind of feather it out a bit. There we go. Throw that in there. Let me grab the lighter. All right, now that we've loaded the stove up with wood, I'm going to go ahead and light it up and we'll show you how fast this thing starts up. And that's probably all we're going to need. That cedar bark burns pretty well. Now that we've got it lit, I'm going to let the camera sit there for a minute. Uh, let you see how it starts up. And in a moment here, I'll bring the camera closer and let you see how the burn holes are working. I'll shut the door up and let you see it. Uh, you can see inside of there already we've got a pretty good flame building. Let me stir that up now that we've got it lit. And there we go. So that's the wood stove in action. It's kind of different than typical wood stove or any other fire you've ever lit. Typically you light a fire from the bottom on gasification, at least on this type of gasification, you light it from the top. So as you can see, we've got a good flame going already inside of there. Stove's working well. I've got the dampener on the bottom shut down. I've got the bottom latch all shut up onto the bottom of the burn chamber. And there we go, we've got a good gasifier wood stove already in action here. As this heats up, more of those holes will start igniting more of that fuel in there. Uh, I've got to start creating the air draw up the system. It's got to heat up the stove a bit. So we'll give that a moment. Let me go ahead and zoom in the camera for you here and let you see what it looks like a little closer in. All right, so there you go. This is a zoomed in shot here looking inside the stove. Uh, as you can see, there is an incredible flame going on in there. I was trying to pick a time where I wasn't going to have any wind here creating a draft in through the door, but we're getting it anyways. As you can see, there is a lot of fuel coming out of that stove right now. It's enough to wick out past the door. Uh, what I'm going to do there is go ahead and shut the door down just for a second and show you what it looks like with the door shut. Uh, so, give me a moment to set that shot up. Alright, so as you can see, with the door open, there is an awful lot of flame going on inside of there, and the flame will actually come out through the door. The smoke that you see right now is only because I have a loose lid on this thing. I didn't put any of the screws in for the shot. Uh, I just wanted to show you what it looked like. I'm not going to get much closer than this, obviously, because of that large flame rolling out of there. And another one rolling out of the chimney pipe. Uh, that afterburner chimney pipe does a good job making sure that uh, it's almost all like a jet coming out of there right now. Heck of a flame, <laughs> really tall. That's why I said you, you definitely need a secondary burn chamber with a gasifying wood stove because there's still a lot of fuel coming out of here at the top. And that's also why the syngas production works. You notice here we have an incredible flame also. That's raging out of there uh, quite a few feet. So what I'm going to do here is shut the door down for you after I zoom in and show you what the holes look like inside. I don't know how well this is going to come out. But you can see the lines of fire here roaring through there. And I'm going to back up just a little bit because that wind is actually gusting that out a bit. An immense amount of heat coming out of this right now uh, for the amount of fuel I just put in there. And not only do you get the heat from the syngas production and burn, but afterwards you get a long period of heat that's going to come from the biochar burn. So let me go ahead and uh, shut this door down for you and 
show you what it does after that. As you can see, I've got uh, more, more energy coming out than I really need. So let me go ahead and do that. Oh, got a little tab stuck off to the side here. All right, so there's the door shut down. And now if you notice out of the top, it looks like we've got a propane uh, or a uh, natural gas burner going here. Uh, so we've got both a heavy syngas fire going on inside the stove, as you can see through the hole in here. And we've also got a four foot flame coming out of the top of our chimney pipe. And the only reason that's being affected right now is because of the wind. But obviously a large amount of syngas production here. Uh, that's why I realized I could still run a generator off this wood stove even while it was heating my house. Uh, as you can see, this is a huge flame raging out of there once you shut the door down. Uh, so I've got to figure out another burn box above this wood stove to help disperse this heat into the house also. Uh, that is definitely not what you want to be wasting. But it makes you wonder just what's coming out of your stovepipe and how much real fuel is there. An incredible burner. I mean, it almost looks like a turbine engine or a jet engine burning out of the top here. That's about an eight foot flame right now coming out of here. So I thought I'd show you that. That's one of the limitations so far I found that uh, definitely not capturing all the heat in a Syngas wood stove. There's still a lot of energy coming out the pipe uh, that we can burn and use still. So the next stove will be adapted to use this energy, which will be heating hot water. Also, you can turn it backwards and run your generator in the end. But as you can see, that is a very, very tall flame. Uh, it's got a lot of energy to it. I'm trying to stay down here below it just in case. So let me go ahead and open up this door again show you what's going on inside the stove. So as you can see we still have immense fire going on inside. That will slow down the jet out of the top slightly when I open that door. You'll see it start to smoke a little bit more. But if you look for that little bit of wood I've put in this stove and the amount of fire that's taken place it's uh, obviously a better way to make a wood stove than the uh, typical design that we're all used to. Uh, I can basically heat a large building on a very minor amount of wood, especially if I can capture even that fire there. So I'm going to go ahead and back up the camera here and give you a chance to watch it burn for a little while. Yeah, so in the end here, what we have is still more work to do to this system. There's obviously a lot more energy to be captured, uh, more energy than I can capture out of that small burn chamber there. Uh, one of the big keys to recapturing the extra energy within this is this wood stove pipe design. Or uh, in the other video I showed you, it's two pipes, an inner and an outer, with a set of burn holes right about here, and another one up at the top, so it's bringing fresh air up between the two pipes, feeding the lower holes and feeding the top ones, which has given us a pretty incredible flame out of there. It's starting to die down now. Uh, with the door open, it's going to eat that fuel a lot faster than it would if I had the dampener shut. So what I have here is I hope the future of wood stove design incorporated into this with the Syngas production, which will be tomorrow's video. Uh, out of the bottom of this system, I'll put the radiator, the fan, and off with the pipe. And I'll show you the syngas production tomorrow out of that with the flare off and the lighter. Uh, and I'll show you that this not only can heat your house, uh, very effectively heat your hot water, but it'll also power your generator. And off a very small amount of wood, I'm pretty sure that was enough BTUs worth of energy if I had captured all of this in a building and disperse it as effectively as possible, I could have heated a large building on just a few handfuls of scrap tinder from underneath the tree. Well, until next time, I hope you enjoyed. This is Mr. Thessalonian and the Thessalonian Man Show.